Joining us right now, a man who's been cu called cute many, many times over his uh, illustrious uh, life, Andrew McCarthy, contributing editor at National Review, senior fellow at the National Review Institute, former federal prosecutor and author of Faithless Execution, Building the Political Case for Obama's Impeachment. Yeah, you're kind of, you know, I, I'm, I'm a straight guy, but you're kind of cute. You think so, Steve? Well, <laughs> we, we didn't have we didn't have uh, we didn't have barns in the Bronx, um, but we did have to know what to do if we got taken behind one. I so. bet you did. Yes, indeed. And I grew up in Brooklyn, so I'm very familiar. We didn't have barns there either. Uh, Andy, all right, let's let, let's get um, serious here. You wrote uh, a great piece yesterday at National Review. Uh, about the uh, the evidence that came forward yesterday. And I'm going to put that evidence up on the screen. Uh, let's go to uh, 141, shall we? Um, this, and, and you and I have discussed this, we've known about this, that uh, when Barack Obama said he found out about Hillary's use of uh, emails, private emails, private address, private server, uh, he learned about it from the rest of the media. But we got an email yesterday from WikiLeaks, March 7, 2015. Do we have 141? And, okay. Um, not really, but anyway, and, and it was it, it, it proves on the day that Obama made that statement to CBS News, um, the, the, the campaign, Cheryl Mills, John Podesta, they went crazy. We need to clean this up. He has emails from her, meaning Hillary. They do not say state.gov. There it is. And, and you and I have been talking about that for, for weeks and weeks and weeks. Yeah, Steve, I think it's important, even though these emails that came out yesterday, I think were devastating because they... Uh, they showed the immediate reaction of people who knew from the inside what was going on, that Obama uh, was not telling the truth. But I think we need to take this back to what you and I <clears throat> originally talked about, which is the emails that we now know about that came out right after the Times uh, exploded everything by revealing uh, Hillary's uh, homebrew server system. So we know that if you just take it over a continuum of a few days, March 4th, they get the Benghazi subpoena from the House committee, Trey Gowdy's committee, uh, demanding production of all of her quote unquote private emails that are about Benghazi. And they immediately get spun up about, you know, what are we going to do about the subpoena? And in the middle of that discussion, Podesta emails Cheryl Mills and says, what about these Obama Clinton emails? Uh, what do we do about them? I think that they should uh, invoke executive privilege, which of course would have had the effect and did have the effect ultimately of burying these emails so that neither the public nor uh, the Congress would see them. But for present purposes, the important thing is, here's Podesta, who's an important transitional figure. He leaves the White House. He's Obama's number one advisor in the White House, right. transitions, and he's transitioning at this point. To Hillary. I'm the chair of Clinton's campaign. <laughs> and he's talking to Cheryl Mills, who is her, with Huma Abedin, like one in one A, her top advisors, right? So this is the very highest level of people who communicate with Obama and with Mrs. Clinton. This is March 4th. They're worrying about the Obama-Clinton emails. Three days later, Obama begins publicly denying that he even knows about the private server system. So, I mean, it's impossible that he, he could not have known about it since he was using it, uh, with an alias, by the way. And, and we, these people knew that he knew he was using it. And, and three days before he decided <laughs> to go around and start lying about it. You know, this is not a situation where he was snagged with a question like a bolt from the blue, you right. know, that they didn't anticipate. They'd been talking for a few days about how to deal with this. Yeah, it is. It is and this just fits right in with your scenario that that's one reason why the FBI could not go after Hillary, uh, because it would have dragged Obama into it. And, and you were absolutely right from the beginning. So kudos on that. Let me uh, bring up a story here, which I saw Chris Cuomo um, defend this to Rudy Giuliani today, who did a great job in talking about it and bringing it out. You wrote a great column on it uh, on, uh, on, I guess, Monday. Um, Clinton's crony allies donated $675,000 to political campaign of FBI officials' wife. We talked about it on Monday as well. Um, the the, the uh, Terry McAuliffe, his PAC, gave over $400,000 to this woman who was running for state senate in Virginia. The Democratic Party of Virginia gave over $200,000 to this woman. $600,000-plus is a heck of a lot of money. 
for a state Senate seat for, for, for someone who's never run before. Her husband happens to be the number three man at the FBI. And he wound up being involved in investigating Hillary Clinton. Now, Cuomo and the left, of which he's a member, are saying, well, they had no way of knowing that this man would be involved in that. This was all predated that. What say you, as, uh, as uh, O'Reilly might say? Well, you know, look, I, I think that, Steve, this would be a much bigger story if the FBI had actually tanked the investigation. But what we know now is that the FBI actually did a pretty good investigation as far as pulling evidence together is concerned. And if this guy Elvis saw that, I don't think he can be criti criticized for the way the case was, was assembled. Because when Comey uh, eradicated the case, he did it on legal grounds, an interpretation of the statute, not on the very good case that the FBI had put together. That being said, when you are prosecuting or you are investigating a case that you expect to be prosecuted, that you expect there's going to be an indictment and eventually a trial, you are very careful about the appearance of impropriety. And you make sure the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. You don't do things like let a subject of the investigation appear as a lawyer for another subject of the investigation. Right, right. And you don't have FBI agents whose motivation can be questioned even if their performance is unimpeachable, the standard that you always operate under is the appearance of impropriety, because it's just as important in the justice system that people accept the outcomes as legitimate as that they be, in fact, legitimate. Yep. That's our whole, the whole premise of our whole system. Yep, yep. And my point is they knew there, this was never, ever going to be a case. Right. Therefore, they got sloppy and careless, yep. and this is another indication of it. Andy, always great to talk to you. Great stuff as usual. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks, Steve. All right, folks. Uh, we talked about the, uh, the polls today. We'll discuss it uh, at length further uh, with the Malsberg panel. Brent Badowski makes a triumphant return, along with the great Jim Hoft. Uh, so I beg you, don't go anywhere.